Along with individual experts, Surgeon Masters brings you life improvement strategies in 10 minutes. These proven principles and strategies are easy to learn and can be applied immediately, allowing you to practice your best. Here's your host, Jeff Smith. Welcome everybody to the Surgeon Masters mini podcast. I have a great guest with us today, Dr. Alan Resnick, orthopedic surgeon and educator at uh, Yale and Quinnipiac. Been doing that for well over 30 years. Welcome, Alan. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. It's a good opportunity to catch up on some of the things we like to talk about and uh, maybe learn something today. We bump into each other almost once a year and shoot the breeze and have really cool conversations. I thought some of them might be really worthwhile to share with our audience. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We always have a good laugh at the Academy, so I'm happy to share some of our great stories. So one of the things that that we talked about was just kind of a little bit of a concept or approach about dealing with employees or other people that work around us on our teams. And tell me a little bit about what you've learned over the years regarding that particular issue. I think that many times we look at our employees and you know sometimes <laughs> the hospital feels this way a lot, that they're our enemy. Sometimes they get in our way or they're not doing what we ask or a million things that can go wrong. And I think sometimes some of the assumptions about it are, are incorrect. And actually, my wife helped me. Uh, it was great. She helped me understand this a long time ago. And her pitch was that anyone who goes to work every day takes care of their kids and their family, you know, makes a living and uh, pays their bills, deserves respect no matter what job they do. And uh, as we talked about in the, in the academy, the, lots of times we underappreciate that, that they're making their lives, they have their own aspirations, thoughts, but under it all, they want to do a good job. And sometimes doing a good job makes means making you happy. The assumption that maybe we're being sabotaged by them or they're getting in our way or they're not the best people doesn't necessarily bring the best out in them. We can talk about this a little more, but it's that just thinking about that alone changes the way you look at everyone around you. Yeah, I can, you know, surgeons and a lot of the stories and anecdotes when we're, if you will, venting about work often come at it from the one angle that you described. But I hear you're saying, like, give yourself the opportunity to acknowledge that everyone's probably showing up to do a good job and be successful. Yeah, you can almost see it in their eyes sometimes. You, something has gone terribly wrong and you're mad at them, feeling that they're incompetent. They're upset that they haven't pleased you. And some of them really take a lot of pride in their work. They take pride in doing a good job. So, you know, setting them up for success and, and appreciating their success and helping you changes the equation a lot. And it actually helps you bring out the best in them. You know, you come in the room and you, you talk about, you know, everyone talks about their day or talks about what makes them happy and something good that happened on the weekend. Although you have to be a little careful about that with women. Sometimes you can't ask them about their weekend too much or talk to them these days about their hair, but as I've been reminded by HR a number of times. But we don't understand that people really work for three reasons. And people work for the reasons it's either they love their job or they get loved by their job. They're getting paid a lot for what they're doing doing or they have an opportunity to improve themselves. When you look back at these things, some people clearly are only working for the money, but they love what they do and they have no opportunity to advance. And other people, there are other combinations, but it turns out if you really look critically at this, most people need at least two of the three of these things to be happy. You know, it's either money and love, money and opportunity, love and opportunity. But without all three, it's problematic for them. And so some of that love is you love them for being there to help you, you know, and some of the, you know, and, and if you show them a little love because they've helped you in a good way, they go home happier and they're more motivated next time to make you happy. And then you can look at doctors, too, and, and other professionals, like what is in the job by themselves that gives them the love they need. And that's something we can talk about too. Is there, how do you feel loved? And for me, it's a patient at the end of the day says, you know, thank you so much for taking care of me. I took care of a anesthesiologist's son today. And I did an ACL reconstruction on him a week ago and he's worked with me for years. And he was just grateful that I took his son on as a patient because the son's coming from out of state and there's a whole Michigas about getting him here, getting his MRI and all this other stuff that happened around behind the scenes to make it happen. And we had to do it in the middle of spring break. And to me, I love doing that. And he appreciated that I love doing it, you know, in a way. And that and that love piece is there for me on that. And I think, you know, that's nice. So we, when we can look at people around us and see, you know, are we giving them the love, the money or the opportunity? What are we giving them? And will they be happy working for us? So you have sometimes employee needs opportunity. 
and you don't recognize it. We talk about that. Do we do we give people an opportunity to, to learn more every day or give them an opportunity to add a skill in their job or even give them an opportunity to gain a promotion? So there's a lot of vignettes over the 30 years where people have come to me and asked me like, oh, do you think I should get an MBA? I really like doing this, blah, 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 blah. And they're really great at their job and I don't want to lose them as an employee. And my answer is always, yeah, if you want to do it, do it. And I'll support you. I'll help you have questions. You know, I got an MBA degree myself. You know, I did it part time. I understand what that's about. Anytime you want to talk about this, I'm happy to be there for you. And these people become my most loyal employees and they love working for me for those reasons. So, yeah, you have to think about these things. And then Jeff and I could talk about this a lot. But, you know, what does the doctor do for the same thing? Yeah. So you can use that same perspective to those on your team. You can also flip that around and say, like, what are you achieving in these three areas of love, money and opportunity? That's fantastic. Any thoughts of the to do's or what you think our listeners should be doing? I mean, I have some thoughts, but I'd be curious as to what your to do thoughts are. For this, if you kind of look at yourself, sometimes it's nice to look at yourself first and look at the people around you, but but sometimes that's harder to do for a lot of people to really look at yourself critically this way. So, you know, I, I think the first thing is look for the few employees around you and make the list. Do, am I giving them love? Am I giving them more money than they would get elsewhere? Are they giving opportunity to them that they've never had or couldn't get elsewhere? And then, and see if if you're falling short, maybe you can do something on, on maybe even a short period of time. Like sometimes all it means is meeting with them. You know, like this is one of the things that once in a while, I haven't done this well, so I'm due, overdue to do it. So I'll just have a team meeting once a month or whatever, just get together with my medical assistant, my nurse and my, my secretary, and we'll sit together and we'll just have lunch, tell some jokes, whatever, you know, talk about what's happening in our lives. And then say, hey, is there anything going on that we need to fix? Is there anything we could do better? Or is there anything that's just a thorn in your side that I'm doing that should be fixed as well? Or is there something coming up that I'm not aware of that's going to really impinge upon the way we work? And let's just talk about it. And then sometimes I'll ask someone in the room to do something and report back on it next time. And I try to engage them in that way. And, and that's giving them opportunity to succeed, but also a little love and understanding that I'm listening to them. So I think that's a to-do thing. And then if you can turn it back on yourself and say, okay, what do I get being either the physician or head of an organization or whatever position I'm in in your practice? And patients can love you. You can love your work. That's one thing. But are you getting love outside? And we're having a hard, hard time like that. You know, you have, we have peer review. We have uh, administrators and hospital people talking telling you what to do. And then we get periodically, there might be a lawsuit we're involved in or we're testifying for something. So it's hard as this level of professional to get love from any direction. So that's a tricky thing. And then, and money, you know, money is, is always a problem now. It was always, money was never a problem. And then opportunity, well, we're already pretty much at the top of the food chain. So the opportunity is more for me anyway. I don't know what it is for you, Jeff, but for me, it's um, sharing my knowledge, you know, expanding that and, and uh, learning constantly learning is an opportunity for me to just grow and develop my skills and feel like I'm doing the best I can. So try to find those things in yourself. And for everyone, it'll be different how you find those things that make those, check those boxes for you. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. It sounds like that you gave people a lot of great to-dos and it's all about providing yourself and the employees in your team with love, opportunity, or money, and at least two of the above. Yeah, that's right. And it's funny, it's an easy thing to think about when you break it down that way. It's an easy thing to way to figure out what's wrong with the situation. Why Why is it my employee, yeah, this last to do, right? Why is my employee unhappy? Well, is it that I don't really respect that they're trying to do a good job? Maybe they can't do a good job. It's not in their skill set, or maybe I haven't given them the tools to do a good job, but they're, yeah, I'm not respecting that they do want to do a good job for me. And that's part of love at the end of the day or the other two elements of it. So I think you tie all those things together is, you know, appreciate and respect that people are here and they actually want to do a good job. That automatically gives you some love both ways. Thanks so much. And in, in the very short take home message. I think that lots of times the message is ultimately what makes you happy will make your employees happy too. And then if you understand the elements of happiness in your job, what makes you happy every day, then, then that goes a long way to making things better for you. Thanks so much. There you have it in less than 10 minutes. This is Jeff Smith, along with Dr. Alan Resnick. Until the next episode of Life Improvement Strategies for the Surgeon Who Wants More. Ciao. Now, take 10 minutes and put your plan into action to practice your best.